everybody. Welcome back. My next guest is the Emmy award-winning actor you know from The Hobbit, Fargo, and Sherlock. He now stars in Breeders on FX. Yeah, I'm just wanting to browse some semi-pro rigs. Really, not full-on professional, but not Fisher Price idiot machines either. Budget? Uh, 400. Right. To 800 ish uh, grand. That's that sort of figure. Okay. Yeah. So we've got some room to maneuver. Yes, my son's 13th birthday. It's the age I was when I got my first proper camera. Oh right, you're you're a photographer. Yeah, yeah, I am. Sorry, no, I'm not. No, these days it's it's just uh, snaps with a phone. But I used to be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I had an eye for composition. You know, when I got my first good camera, I'd take a bus over to Richmond Park and just sit there for hours on my own, photographing birds, wildlife. Clouds. Please welcome Martin Freeman. Hello, Martin Freeman. Good to see you. Well, nice to see you, Steve. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining us from London. Actually, Liverpool. Oh, really? Yes, I'm filming something in Liverpool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, UK. Let's just round it out and say UK. UK. Yeah. That is, that would be impressive, except I just spoke to Lupita Nyong'o from Kenya. So... It's not a contest, but she won. Why did she win? Because she's further away. And I'm sorry, Kenya's a little more exciting than Liverpool. Yeah, tell that to the Fabs. Yeah, damn. <laughs> they left. This is very true. <laughs> are you are you Liverpudlian yourself, or? <laughs> no, I'm not. No? no, I'm working. I'm working in Liverpool. Why did you laugh at the idea that you might be from Liverpool, or did you like not me saying Liverpudlian? No, 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 you're quite correct with Liverpudlian. But no, I, th I think if I was Liverpudlian, that would have come up before on one of our meetings. I just think it would. And also, I wouldn't sound like this. Well, what would you sound like, Martin Freeman? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you show me what I would sound like? Um, well, I certainly enjoyed being in The Hobbit with Peter Jackson. That was nice. That wasn't bad that at all. That's not bad. That, that's a lot better than some of your fellow countrymen. Yes. Thank you very much. That's George. I'm doing George there. I could tell. Because <laughs> I was playing rhythm guitar the entire time. In your eyes, you were. It's the 20th anniversary of, of, uh, of The Office, the original Office. You yes. and, and, and your, your, your breakout, hit your first major role, Tim Canterbury in The Office. You have said, now you're a, big, you're a big deal, but you've said that you've been famous for 20 years, but you've never gotten good at being famous. What, is that, what does that mean? I think, I think because um, something happens to you when you become famous, the, the, you know, things change, and I think you're sort of expected to wear a sort of mantle a bit easy. And I don't think I, here's the thing, I don't think I wear it very easily. I don't think. I think other people wear that a little bit, better than I do or more comfortably or something. And I and think it, I don't know, I just. Does it involve like being willing to wave to a crowd or stand on a red carpet or like, what's the part of it that is uneasy with you? I tell you, I, in all seriousness, the bit that's un, uneasy with me is when you're on, when, when you're in a car on the way to, and listen, these are all clearly good problems to have. I acknowledge that. But when you're in a car on the way to the red carpet, right? And you may, maybe just, you know, you've maybe just had one of these or whatever, and to, as a little straightener, and you're in the in the car, and as you get a little bit closer, you start to hear that um, noise, and it, it, it's not good for my nervous system. I don't think it's, um, it doesn't make me feel, yeah, this is great. It makes me feel like uh, anxious, you know, the roar of the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're and not like people, a gladiator. You feel like the meat being thrown to the lions. Yeah, kind of. But, but yes, you're sort of the meat being thrown to the lions. But the the game is that you are really the gladiator. But actually inside you feel like, uh, yeah, you feel like an early Christian. Yeah. Let's talk about the fan base because you've got some intense fan bases out there. You've got the Office fans. You've got mm. like, you know, the Middle Earth Hobbit fans. And you've got the Sherlock fans. Of yeah, those groups... Yeah. Can you tell who they are walking towards you? Like when they recognize you, can you go, oh, that's from this show or that's from that movie? Yes, a little bit. yes you can. You can a little bit. And I don't know whether it's changed. Because, of course, you know, The Office is, I'm sorry, the, Sherlock is now, you know, that was on 11 years ago, first time. So, so some of those fans would have grown up. There was a period where there was a kind of sweet spot of a couple of years where I knew if it was a, a, a girl or a woman aged between, say, 16 and 25 with long, dark hair and glasses 
and a rucksack, that was Sherlock without question, without question. But then there would be a, some sort of concentric circle of that, you know, because they're also allowed to like The Hobbit, and they do. Yes. But um, Office fans are pretty, you know, they're mainly 53-year-old men. Uh, so Sad. So Sad. Then they haven't got the, yeah, they haven't got the energy to run towards me. Thank God. Yeah. We have to take a quick break, but folks, we'll be right back with more Martin Freeman. 